So I'm going to upgrade the ULA chip on the ZX Spectrum. This is from Retroleum. It's a Nebula. So it should just slot in. And I'll just show the instructions. So what it's saying in the instructions, if you've got these sockets in here, on these chips, then it's going to catch. So it means all these four chips here, look. And so these are in sockets, so this board I'll have to take them sockets out and put the chip straight onto the, market, uh, the circuit board to give it enough room. So it says in the instructions that sometimes the sockets aren't very good and you have to replace some of these ones if you've already got a socket in there. They don't fit very well, but we'll see what happens. And also, if you've got a rubber keyed ZX Spectrum, I don't know if there's enough room for this to fit actually. I'll have to read the instructions. But this one's out of a rubber keyed ZX Spectrum, and I don't think the ULA is broken in this one, so I'm going to take the ULA out of another one, put this one in it, and try it in this one. And also, if that doesn't work, I'm going to try that because this had 22 volts on the 12 volt line, and I think it blew something up. So, this is the board I'll be swapping it with. This is my first original ZX Spectrum and it's been modified with a lot of things already so this is my best one. Well it come out alright using a, a little screwdriver at either end going in like that and prising up a little bit either side. Now that's it pressed down, took quite a bit of pressing down to be honest so uh, just make sure it's all the way in obviously. I'm going to try it out now. All hooked up, let's turn her on. Here we go. Oh yes. That's it then. I'm going to fix in the computer now, hopefully. I've got this other spectrum and this is what's happened. I put 22 volts onto the 12 volt rail by mistake by changing the wrong resistor. And I can't get the screen off either blue or red. So I think I've lost the yellow. So I'm going to change that to ULA chip with this one. So I'll just go and change that chip now and if it's not that then it could be this encoder because that goes up to 18 volts. I think it's 12 volts to 18 volts and obviously 22 volts is not doing any good. And I've tried adjusting these and I can't get it to work. And then after that I've got to sort the RAM out and I think it's M2 chips here because I've got 32. That's 34 on an error and that's 32 and that's 2 so that's 34 so it's M2 chips. Fit the new ULA and I'll have to adjust the oh don't touch it. I'll try it out anyway. Well, it looks greener. I'll adjust these pots. Ah, wait a minute. Anyway, I'm going to have to have a play with that, aren't I? I don't think that's done it, but... Well, I've fiddled about a bit and we've got it to white screen. So it was a ULA that was knackered. So that's two computers working properly. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, I'm just going to have to finish off with some transistors and uh, some fast recovery diode. Replacing that one diode here and them two transistors. I should have done that in the first place. That's the first job you should do, really, but... I've done everything the way around. Right, that's it then. New diode, transistors, capacitors, regulator, 5 volt regulator, 9 volt socket, speakers, connectors is brand new, SRAMs, brand new, new, um, oh god, ULA, capacitors, um, new um, microphone and ear sockets. Composite mod, obviously, and new socket there, capacitors, and that's it. Everything's new and it's all done. So, I'll just test out how much power the difference is between them um, a board without modifications. What we've got there 6.5 watts. And the board with the SRAM on and the uh, all the other modifications. Oh, where's it gone? Oh, 
come on. Four point two, four point three. So quite a bit of difference then, really, in power usage. Well, and thank you for watching.